Yes, go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, I think we got uh, enough people to get started. Again, uh, my name is Jackie Wong, and I have Nishan uh, Unikrishan with me. Uh, today, we're doing a, a release of Mo uh, MotionWorks IC version 3.3 and MPIEC version 3.3. Uh, so um, one thing I want to mention is uh, this, this uh, webinar is going to be recorded. So uh, if, if you miss any details, uh, feel free to uh, go back online uh, to www.yesiao.com and refer to it. Uh, the presentation is going to be also available. Um, throughout this webinar, please feel free to uh, type in questions at any time. Uh, but just so you guys know, uh, for, for the sake of time, we will be answering questions uh, at the end of this webinar. So uh, today's topic that we, that we want to cover, uh, I'm, I'm going to first go over the, uh, some general information uh, on a new product and, and about their availability. Afterwards, uh, Nishan is going to go into details of MotionWorks IC 3, uh, version 3.3, uh, the firmware version 3.3, as well as uh, the details of the Sigma 7 SIC. So first, uh, some general information on new product. Hardware-wise, we uh, we're, we're releasing two uh, new products today. Uh, the first one is Sigma 7 MP2600 IEC. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the Sigma 5 version of the MP2600 IEC, uh, the functionality is exactly the same. Uh, nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is that the uh, amplifier uh, on the side of it is, is now a Sigma 7. Uh, one thing to notice, uh, when you uh, open up a MotionWorks IEC, uh, when you open up a project, uh, you will be using the exact same uh, MP2600 IEC template that you have been using. Uh, for this product, uh, for, uh, for the Sigma 7 MP2600 IC, uh, it is currently only available for single axis and uh, 100, uh, 200 volts amplifiers. The uh, second product that, that we'll be releasing today is the Sigma 7 SIC. Again, this is a very similar uh, product to the MP2600 IC. It's, it's almost exactly the same functionality. The main difference is that uh, there's no option card on the side, uh, giving it a, a much more compact design. Uh, notice on, on the picture, uh, there's uh, two uh, Ethernet switch uh, ports. Uh, the, there's an internal switch, so the two ports is actually sharing the same IP address, uh, giving this product the ab ability to uh, daisy chain. And again, because there's no uh, uh, option card on the side, uh, the the, the uh, product is, is limited to the Sigma 7 onboard uh, IOs. Uh, this means that there's uh, seven digital in, uh, three digital out, and there is uh, no external encoder input. And uh, here's the uh, nomenclature for both of the product. Uh, on the left, you have the uh, part number layout for the MP2600 IEC for Sigma 7. As you can see, it's, it's very similar uh, to the Sigma 5 uh, nomenclature, the, the option code is also ending in uh, 300. Uh, on the right, uh, you have the uh, part numbering of uh, Sigma 7 SIC. Uh, uh, the, the option code is, is ending in F50. And all this information is available online at uh, www.yaskawa.com as well as the uh, literature for the products. So for both products, uh, the pricing uh, will be available on OPT by the end of the day. Uh, information for the product is currently available at www.yaskawa.com. Uh, we are order, uh, accepting orders uh, immediately. Uh, shipping for both products will start uh, March 6, uh, 2017. Uh, moving on to uh, software and firmware, and before that, I would like to highlight uh, some work that our engineering group has done for, uh, for the uh, group toolbox. We've added uh, some new features. Uh, uh, some to highlight are the G-code streaming to MPIC via Ethernet, uh, also the G-code interpretation from uh, G-code file. Um, last, a couple weeks ago, Kevin Hall has done a, a webinar on, on, on these features. Uh, if you've missed it, 
uh, please uh, go to www.yaskar.com and the presentation and the webinar is available for review. Uh, some new features for uh, MPIC firmware version 3.3 and uh, MotionWorks IC 3.3. And these points will be covered uh, by, by Nishant later on in more details. Uh, first is uh, Sigma Win Plus uh, through uh, Metrolink 3. Uh, the uh, download time has been drastically improved for the, for the uh, controller. Uh, flash writing is now three times faster, and uh, RAM download is now four times faster. Uh, we're now supporting uh, Delta Robot and Custer ki custom kinematics in, in uh, MotionWorks IEC and the controller. Uh, of course, with the two hardware, uh, new hardware uh, product, uh, MP2600 IEC and, and Sigma 7 SIC being released, uh, both products are now um, uh, supported uh, on the software as well. Um, lastly, uh, a new feature that we have added is the uh, tangent axis following uh, for contouring applications, uh, uh, most, which is most useful for uh, um, um, machine tool types of applications. So uh, both the firmware version and uh, MotionWorks IC 3.3 are now available for download at uh, www.yaskawa.com. Uh, please feel free to uh, go online, download, and uh, take a look at the trial version, and uh, let us know if you have any questions. I'm going to pass the floor now to uh, Nishant, and uh, he's going to go into details uh, of, on the uh, separate products. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, first off, I'm going to start off with the MotionWorks IEC 330209 release of our software. Uh, Jackie may have mentioned a few of these uh, functions that are new with this product. Uh, the new functionality includes support for Delta robots. Uh, we do have support for the MLX200 robot controller configuration. Uh, Sigma 7 SIC supported performance parameter, a new tab has been included uh, in the hardware configuration. Uh, motion queue sizes for uh, groups uh, is now configurable. Uh, two new additions have been made to the project template. Uh, they are the addition of the Ymotion firmware library and the Math Toolbox user library. A couple of improvements that have been made to the hardware configuration. Uh, first one is the offline save is about five times faster. So if you have an offline configuration and you want to save it uh, and send that, uh, save that configuration, which has maybe a lot of axes in your project, uh, this is much faster now with 3.3. Uh, we do also have support for fractional machine cycles in the hardware configuration. And we'll look at all these improvements and new functionalities in a slightly more detail shortly. Uh, Delta Robot Support, this is uh, an exciting new uh, addition that we have uh, made into uh, MotionWorks IEC. Uh, as you all know, Yaskaba Motorman does support uh, two brands of Delta Robots, the MPP3H and MPP3S uh, Delta Robots. Uh, these two Delta Robots can be automatically configured using the hardware configuration, and you could start using all group functionality uh, with this uh, with this uh, in, in MotionWorks IEC. You can start programming with PLC Open Part 4 function blocks. Uh, here is a screenshot of what uh, the hardware configuration would look like when you configure the uh, Delta robot. Uh, f first off, the user has to create the Delta group in the configuration, as you can see on the, on the left, and then once a group is created, uh, the axes that make up that group have to be added uh, to the group. Uh, we also support, we, we do have default parameters that can be uh, sent to those axes that correspond to the Delta robot. This way you can make use of uh, Yaskawa and Motorman's experience with the best parameters that can be used for that particular robot. Uh, we do have custom Delta robot support, which means any third-party Delta robot can be supported. Uh, there's a screen with which you can choose the custom Delta option, and then there is a 
set kinematics uh, option with which the Delta robot, the custom Delta robots parameters can be set up. Once they're set up, they can be used like any other PLC open part for group that is supported on the uh, on on MotionWorks in, in MotionWorks IC and the MPIC controllers, which means you can use any PLC open part for uh, motion uh, function blocks or any any functionality in PLC open part for to run these uh, robots. Uh, the second new functionality that we have added to MotionWorks IC 3.3 is the configuration for the MLX, uh, the, uh, MLX uh, robot controller. Um, so once an MLX controller is added, uh, we, can, we can search for the MLX controller on the network and it updates the MLX's IP address. Uh, we can use uh, these controls to get the configuration from the MLX, which essentially gets the firmware versions and also gets the kind of robot that is configured on that robot controller. Uh, configurations can also be sent down to the MLX. For example, uh, if simulation needs to be performed, we can send the file that uh, enables the simulation in the MLX. Another new functionality is the uh, configurable motion queue uh, for groups. <coughs> the default number of buffered moves that can be buffered into, uh, into the motion buffer for groups has been 16. That is now configurable uh, with a maximum of 8192 motion, uh, motion, motions that can be buffered into the motion queue for groups in general. A new tab has been added to the hardware configuration uh, screen for uh, individual axes, and the new tab is an optimal performance tab, optimization tab, and uh, the details are shown on the screen. You, you can also check it out by uh, using the new hardware configuration. Um, essentially, this is a, uh, th th these are parameters that typically, based on Yaskawa's motion experience, we've seen helps uh, in improving the performance of an axis once general tuning has been performed on that particular axis. Uh, a lot of you must have had experience with having to add uh, uh, feed-forward gain on the, on the drive, uh, maybe, maybe also supply a feed-forward filter time constant, uh, play with the, uh, the sub-interpolation filters which are set by parameter uh, 1311 in the controller and also drive parameters PN 811 and 812. So with, with this particular screen we wish to uh, help users do all these uh, with one click of a button. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to mention here that this is not a one, uh, this is not a replacement for tuning uh, but this is a, a, a screen with which you can probably uh, start or at least show, uh, this is a screen that shows all the parameters uh, which you might need for uh, optimizing performance. They're all brought under one, uh, brought onto one screen from which you can control all these parameters. Uh, the effects of some of these parameters, or, or all these parameters, have been mentioned in a previous uh, webinar. Uh, the uh, document number for that webinar to be uh, that you can use to search uh, is shown here. It's ppmp 2000 iec03 uh, if you search for that document, you, you would be able to see the effects of these parameters on your machine and access performance. Uh, more improvements to the hardware configuration. Uh, the first one is a fractional machine cycle. So now you can go in and put in a machine cycle that's less than one. Uh, one was the minimum uh, machine cycle that you could put in uh, initially or, or before 3.3. Uh, now you can put in a fractional machine cycle in the uh, configuration for, uh, for, for an axis. Also, like I mentioned uh, before, the offline save is about five times faster than it was for MotionWorks IC version 3.2. Moving on to firmware 3.3. Uh, important to note here is there is no update for MP2000 series controllers. Firmware 3.3 is specifically for MP3000 IEC controllers, uh, the new product Sigma 7S IEC and MP2600 IEC. Uh, the exact 
firmware version, the build number for firmware 33 for 3200s, 3300s, and the Sigma 7 SIC is 251, whereas the build number for MP2600 IC controllers is 253. In the firmware, again, uh, there's a, a few new functions that we have added and some improvements that we've made. Uh, new functions include Delta Robot Support, uh, which requires a uh, specific part number for the IEC controller. Uh, there's a new function block called Y Group Inputs. Uh, new, other new function blocks uh, include Group Power, Sync Tangent Access to Group, uh, Brake Release, and also functions like s curve for Group Motion, in machine coordinate system and the ability to access drives uh, or access Sigma Win or control drives using Sigma Win through Mechatrolink 3. The improvements include uh, improvements in uh, faster download speed and uh, uh, additional features added to the function block MC regroup status. New functionality, uh, Delta Robot support. We saw how the uh, hardware configuration supports Delta Robots. Now, you will have the ability to control Delta Robots custom or Yaskawa Motorman Robots, Delta Robots, MPP3, S, and H robots using Mechatrolink 3. Um, so the same setup could be used if the motor sizes are the same and consistent. Uh, the sizes of the Delta robots are the same. The same uh, physical configuration could be used uh, for any kind of Delta robot that can be controlled directly using Mechatrolink 3. So this means the firmware uh, has the kinematics of the Delta mechanism uh, built into or, or burnt into the, uh, in, into the uh, MPIC controller. And the user will be able to use PLC open part four function blocks to run the mechanism. And uh, that is illustrated on this, uh, on this uh, screen here. Uh, your PLC open part four library with its function blocks that you see here in the middle, uh, which include MC move linear absolutes can be used to make the Delta robot mechanism move or uh, perform pick and place applications or whatever application you have in mind. Uh, we have a new function block uh, named Y Group Inputs, which essentially is used to monitor uh, inputs that are typically required for robot safety. Uh, remember that these uh, inputs are not used to control or manage safety. These are only used to reflect the safety inputs that have to be sent to a safety PLC. So. This new function block, group inputs, is used to reflect the safety uh, inputs of your system, of your robot system, or any kind of group mechanism uh, into the axis group ref structure uh, that is essentially saving and keeping all the uh, parameters of your group. So you can see here uh, a group or a robot group or any, any kind of group may have a pendant that's attached to it, which has an e-stop and maybe a live man switch. Uh, you have your auto and manual modes. You may have a light curtain. All these inputs wired into your safety PLC or your safety system can be uh, reflected through the MPIC controller onto the group inputs function block. And the group inputs function block essentially will send it to the axis group ref structure. And the inputs can be monitored in your project. Now this is specifically useful for people who have uh, HMIs or uh, want to send this information to uh, higher monitoring systems, in, in, you know, for example, on, on a SCADA system. You would be able to reflect your safety status up, uh, upstream or, or, or you know, onto, onto your uh, monitoring system or your HMI. Uh, for example, so let's say if you were to, if your group were in uh, control mode, uh, manual control mode, you would not be able to use an MC move linear absolute, which is a automatic uh, mode function block. Uh, but if your conditions were right, and if you're in manual mode, you would be able to jog your axis because the jog function blocks are 
uh, blocks that can be used in your manu in, in manual mode. Uh, a new function block, Y group power, has been introduced. Uh, the Y group power is uh, very similar to uh, MC power that you all have used for single axis control. However, the uh, it, it, it's very similar to MC power in functionality. However, uh, operation is quite different because Y group power is edge sensitive as opposed to level sensitive. MC power for single axis groups was level sensitive. Y group power for group control is edge sensitive. In order to energize your group, uh, which is a collection of axes, uh, you first have to turn the power input on and then the rising edge of the execute will send the energizing uh, command to the to the function to the to the controller which essentially energizes all the axes of the group and there's a new parameter 2704 that reflects the status of all the axes being energized on your group in order to turn the uh, turn power off from all the axes in the group you turn the variable power off and fire the execute of the Y group power function block, which turns the turns all the axes off for your group. So like I said, uh, again, this is uh, similar in functionality uh, to MC power, but uh, different in terms of how it needs to be uh, operated in order to get what you need to get. A new function block in firmware 3.3 is uh, why sync tangent axis to group. Uh, this affects an axis that's not part of the group. Essentially, if you have a, uh, a, let's say, a cutting operation or a scoring operation, and you need a third axis which is not part of the group, let's say you have an XY group uh, for an XY gantry, and you have a third axis that needs to be tangent, that needs to be running tangential to the XY plane, uh, you can you can use this function block. Uh, where you specify your XY group and you specify your independent axis and that independent axis can be made to run tangential to your uh, to, to the path that your axis group is following. Uh, for example, if you need needed to uh, keep keep this third axis to cut or score along the tangent along which the uh, the, the tool point is moving, uh, this this would be the uh, the user would have to essentially configure it, and, and this would be the, the output that you get out of that tangent chill motion of that third axis. Uh, now, this is not, if you have sharp edges like the one that you're seeing on the picture here, uh, the user will have to, uh, the, you know, these are not smooth transitions. The user will have to stop the, uh, the, the, the uh, tooltip or the group from moving, and they would have to reorient the, uh, the third axis in order the uh, external axis in order to um, orient it in the right direction move forward uh, another new functionality with firmware 33 is uh, the release of these new function blocks called Y break release and Y group break release uh, this essentially overrides the servo packs control of the break uh, which might be useful for applications where uh, you have situations where your your axis is jammed, or you you want to release the uh, the axis from a uh, from a from a jam, and you want to make sure that you're extracting your tool or extracting your part in, in a safe fashion. Uh, so the break release function block in the Y motion library can be used for single axes, and the Y group break release for uh, groups can be used uh, from the PLC Open Part Four library. Uh, uh, remember, the Y group break release uh, is done per axis. Uh, group break release does not release the breaks of all the axes in the group at the same time. You have to do it on a per axis basis, which is why the, the axis input is uh, shown for the Y group break release. Uh, there is uh, support for S group uh, S curves for group motion in machine coordinate system, uh, which uh, essentially has to be the the first part of uh, enabling this functionality is to configure it in the hardware configuration where the user can 
set up the maximum number of samples that needs to be filtered in order to get S-curve motion. Um, there are two new parameters, uh, 2110 and 2701. Uh, the, the, the first one is essentially the time constant that the user wants for getting S-curve motion, and the second one is a Boolean parameter that enables or disables this functionality. This is very similar to a single axis parameter that enables the S-curve. There are two parameters on for single axes as well that were used to, one was used to enable the S-curve functionality and the other one was to set the time constant in seconds. This is, this is fairly similar to that. Uh, here's the results from an S-curve uh, test that we performed for machine coordinate system. Uh, on the left is the XY position uh, now, the S-curve is not what you're seeing here. The S-curve is not uh, something that you will see on your position plot. Uh, the, this is, this, uh, this uh, blending that you see here in the corner is purely because of blending and not because of S-curving. The S-curve, effects of S-curve are seen on your velocity profile, as you can see here. If, if you enlarge a position on your, uh, on your uh, uh, velocity plot, you'll be able to see how S-curve uh, helps in reducing the jerk in the uh, in the transition for velocity. You can see how the uh, velocity goes to your steady state velocity in a smoother fashion, which reduces your torque and jerk. Uh, <clears throat> another new functionality is the ability to use sigma wind through Mechatrolink three. Um, the steps are detailed here. The first step would be to connect. Uh, uh, well, first of all, you need Sigma Wind version 7.11 for this functionality. Uh, first step is to connect the servo pack. Uh, second step would be to uh, the, set the connection method, which is uh, Mechatrolink relay device that you see here. Uh, the third step is to set up the, uh, the IP address of the PC that you're using. Um, if, if you need to use your uh, you will have to use your PC's uh, network in order to uh, use this functionality, and so you have to set up your PC's IP address. Once that's done, uh, we select the uh, Mechatrolink relay device. Essentially, uh, it, it is going through Mechatrolink, which means it will be using your controller. Uh, the controller's IP address and the station address will have to be set up, uh, and by the, uh, the, the user will have to set up circuit number one for this application and then you can continue searching for the server pack after that's been done. When the server pack has been found, you can click connect, and then functionality is the same as what you're all used to with standard Sigma Win. Improvements to firmware 3.3 uh, over firmware version 3.2. The download speed has been vastly improved. The MP3000 IEC uh, download to Flash is three times faster with this newly released firmware version. Uh, this was tested, our, our test project was a, a large, fairly large machine uh, control project, uh, which was uh, 2.11 MB in size. Uh, we were testing on a 400 megahertz uh, 3300 IEC controller. Uh, the project had six servos in it, uh, one remote robot. Uh, it, it included a T-Bot group. Uh, nine Ethernet IP adapters and a Modbus TCP server. Uh, with this, uh, we were able to, uh, previously, prior to 3.3, we were able to uh, uh, you know, download uh, changes to the flash. Uh, the, the rate was fairly slow. It, it took four minutes, 43 seconds to do that, do the download to flash. Uh, whereas with 3.3, no, no other changes made, just updating uh, the firmware version to 3.3 we were able to download to Flash in 1 minute 34 seconds. That's roughly, uh, or rather exactly, three times faster. Uh, another improvement uh, is to the function block MC read group status. Uh, we've added extra inputs to, the, uh, to this function block, and this, is, this has been inspired by our uh, single axis group stat read, read, group, uh, read status function block which had uh, similar or rather same functionality on, on its outputs. So this helps in covering mostly all states and all motion types for a group. So 
added number of uh, outputs uh, to help MC group read status show the uh, the states of your group now. Uh, Sigma seven SIEC, like uh, Jackie mentioned, uh, this the the functionality is the same. Uh, you will have to choose the Sigma seven SIEC template when you're starting a new project. This new template is uh, available in MotionWorks IEC when you start a new project. So uh, if you have a Sigma seven SIEC project, you start from this new template. And uh, there are two Ethernet ports, and they act as a switch because they share the same IP address. And uh, everything else is the same as uh, it's, it's a Mechatrolink server pack which has a built-in motion controller. So everything else, uh, uh, all the other features are the same. You, you have the same uh, Modbus and Ethernet IP drivers. Uh, you have the same motion uh, function blocks and camming and gearing and everything remains the same. Uh, thing to be noted is there is no external encoder support. So uh, when you gear or cam, uh, you have to be aware that uh, there is no external encoder support, which means uh, you know gearing and camming would only be done using uh, virtual master. And uh, so this new firmware and software, these are quick links available for our firmware and quick links for the software. Uh, they are live now. If you go to the Yaskava website and uh, go to those. Uh, uh, go, go to those pages on yaskava.com. You should be able to see the uh, live links for version 3.3 for both software and firmware. I will open up the floor for questions now. There's a question uh, whether the Sigma 7 SIC can use remote VIPA. Uh, uh, Sigma 7 SIC uh, has the same Ethernet IP and Modbus drivers, so any uh, any uh, slave or uh, adapter or scanner uh, device that previously used to, used to connect to any MPIC controller would work with the uh, Sigma 7 SIC because they share the same uh, Ethernet, IP, and Modbus TCP drivers. Uh, there's a question, uh, a license for MotionWorks 2.5, would it work for MotionWorks 3.3? Uh, and no. Version 3.3 requires, version 3 actually requires a new license. So if you have a new license for version 3, uh, for example, if you have already have a license for version 3.2, then you can up upgrade it to 3.3, uh, as in you can just uh, install the new version 3.3 uh, and that, that will work. But if you have version 2, uh, you will not be able to use the version 2 license for version 3. Can a Sigma 5 based MP2600 be upgraded to version 3.3? Uh, yes. Uh, version 3.3 firmware can be upgraded on a, an existing MP2600, which has a Sigma 5 amplifier on it. What if I was already using MC Power to servo on my group? Can I still use that method? M must I use a new FB? Uh, if, you're, if you have uh, projects that already have MC Power for individual axes and you are using it, uh, to power on multiple axes in your group. You can still use that option. Uh, y group power is a block that is intended for newer applications and or if you wanted to change your uh, code in order to uh, you know, make use of this uh, new function block, uh, you could use that. But if you're already happy with the way you're powering on your uh, axes in the group, then you do not have to change over to the new function block. Why is the new group uh, power function block edge triggered instead of level triggered. Um, there, there were uh, MC Power was based on the PLC Open specification that uh, Yaskawa started off uh, about ten years ago for the development of the MPIC series controllers, and uh, uh, there were uh, a few shortcomings that we've we've seen and learned over the years. Uh, one of them, uh, uh, one of the shortcomings that uh, a lot of complaints we received was based on. Uh, on on on, on uh, level triggered uh, because it was level triggered was that any time uh, an alarm was reset and the conditions for turning the uh, power on was became true it would automatically just go on and turn on to become true without a uh, without the user's added input to turn it on so uh, you know th that was one of the complaints so that's why we decided to um, uh, change it and also. Uh, with the uh, with with the uh, level triggered level sensitive uh, function block, 
you could have only one instance of this function block in order in, in your project. And if you had multiple instances, it would fight for control of your access. And, and so there were a, a few uh, things we learned along the way that uh, were, you know, in, points of inconvenience for the user, which uh, was what for, made us think about a different way for groups. Any limitations on task timing for Sigma 7 SIC? Uh, no, it, it, the, the processor uh, speed should be the same as the 2600. Uh, the, there are no limitations. Uh, it, it is not different from uh, what we have seen on the 2600. For the new RBT firmware, most motion function blocks will be available. Are there any restrictions to general motion when using RBT? Uh, no, there are no restrictions from uh, using any function blocks or any, uh, any functionality on the RBT controller. The RBT controller will, uh, the, the added feature on the RBT controller is that it will s support uh, kinematics, uh, delta kinematics for now, and any added kinematics that we work on in the future will be available on the RBT controller, but there, there are no limitations on already existing functions on the RBT controller. There are a few questions that uh, users have been uh, posting, uh, which I don't understand the, uh, the uh, I, I don't get the complete meaning of the question. So I'm going to skip those questions and I'll, I'll get back to the uh, uh, question uh, specifically. I'll, I'll, I'll answer, uh, I'll email the uh, user who's asking the question and try to get back to him uh, because I'm not completely clear on what the uh, question means. So. So there's this one question that asks uh, why it, why the new MP2600 don't have the possibility of, of an external encoder. Uh, so so the MP2600 IEC does have uh, external encoder uh, because it, it does have the option card. The the difference is uh, the the Sigma 7S IEC is the one that does not have the uh, uh, option card and hence the uh, does not have the uh, external encoder. And uh, another another question is uh, is is the Sigma Seven SIC same as uh, Sigma uh, Logic? Uh, uh, so they're not they're not the same. So the the Sigma Seven SIC is a compact uh, version uh, of a full blown IEC uh, controller, whereas the uh, Sigma Logic uh, relies on uh, AOI and, and and actually connects to to a uh, upper level uh, uh, controller. And uh, just just so everyone knows, we we are planning an, an upcoming uh, uh, webinar as well on on the, our our new new another new product, which is the uh, uh, Sigma Logic Seven Compact. Uh, so so those those products are different. Uh, and then one question is uh, is is the uh, license transferable? So so the uh, MotionWorks uh, license. Is transferable. There, there is a, uh, a paper on on uh, online uh, showing uh, users how to host and and rehost the license. Uh, there's a question whether the tangent path following could be used on a 3D axis group. Uh, uh, cur currently, we have support only for planar motion. So, if you have a 3D axis group, uh, that's okay. You can you can still use that group. But the tangent support is only for two acts, two two degrees of freedom on that on that, which may, basically makes up a two D plane. So if your tooltip is moving along a three D uh, plane, we will not be able to support uh, tangent on that. So the tangent will support be supported only on a two D plane for now. Support for Sigma seven four hundred volt amps will not be uh, done until the next release of the firmware, so we will not have support for 400 volt amps with version 3.3. Yeah, is there, is there, can you, there's a question that asks if uh, multiple amps can be commissioned at once using Sigma Wind pass-through. Uh, um, I believe, I, I, we don't, we don't think uh, you can uh, support, simul simultaneously connect to multiple amplifiers. It, it has to still be one amp at a time because it searches one amp at a time. There's a uh, question about will a Sigma Logic version be available for Sigma 7? Uh, 
There, there is, and, and again, it's going to be the upcoming uh, webinar. Uh, we're planning to have that webinar on March 6, uh, we, where we'll cover the details uh, on that product. Uh, the, so there was a question, uh, what, what is done with the usual battery required for the 2600 SIEC when you, when, you, when you convert to a Sigma 7 SIEC? Uh, the, the Sigma 7 SIEC does not require a battery. So, you know, the, so you don't you don't really have to do anything with the battery you, all, you already had with the twenty six hundred. The Sigma Seven SIC does not have or require a battery. The controller is built in. There's a question as to how many deltas can be supported on one controller. Uh, th this is limited. This is basically a, a question of how many axes your controller can support. So if your if your controller can support um, you know, 20 axes. You could have five delta controllers, delta robots on it. If you don't, if you're not, if you're using all the axes uh, for deltas, can can coordinated motion be done with multiple sigma seven SIECs? Uh, no, strict coordination, strict coordinated motion cannot be done over Ethernet IP. So, I would say you wouldn't want to do coordinated motion uh, across different Sigma 7 SIECs. The Y group power example used on MLX groups, uh, can, can it now be used for general motion groups? Uh, the answer is yes. The Y group power function block that we just spoke about a little while ago can be used for uh, general groups, general motion groups for any group on uh, control on the Mechatrolink uh, network. There was a question if uh, Ethernet IP external encoders could be used uh, because uh, the uh, because the uh, Sigma 7 SIC does not have support for hardware external encoder. Uh, uh, you, theoretically, it's a possibility, but uh, it's, we can you know g getting your external encoder signal over a communication network is probably not the best uh, way of uh, doing things. Uh, there is no guarantee of any synchronization. So you'll have very, very, um, uh, you know, your, your performance cannot be guaranteed at all if you use uh, 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 encoders that are based on communication protocols. So, so in such an application where you need uh, synchronized uh, 1.5 axis control, where the point, the, the half axis is your external encoder, you would, you would, uh, it would be advisable to upgrade to a 2600 IEC. Can a group be a slave for? Camming or gearing, uh, we do not have support for uh, camming a group to an axis or gearing a group to an axis as of now. Uh, but that is a, a, a specification that uh, is available in PLC Open Part Four, and we are working towards that. Uh, we we do not have a set date for when that will be uh, put as a feature into our product, but we, that, that is definitely uh, possible and something that we will be working towards. So we're going to wrap up this uh, webinar here. Uh, I do have a few other questions, and like I said, I will try to get back to the uh, the uh, person who asked the question over email and answer their questions that way, uh, because it, it probably needs further clarification to answer these questions. Uh, so I, I will uh, get back to the, the the originator of the question. Uh, hopefully this was uh, uh, informative. Uh, ho uh, like I said, you know, if you have further questions, please uh, feel free to email me or email our tech support group. Um, uh, we would like you to download the latest uh, software and firmware and try it out, uh, work with the features and uh, understand it better. So uh, uh, take this opportunity to thank all of you for attending this webinar and uh, have a good rest of the week. Thank you. Thanks, guys.